Who's ready to get angry at the uh, medical care system? Everybody ready? Okay. All right. Strap the fuck in. You're going to hear the whole story. So a few months ago, um, as you know, I wasn't feeling well. I was on stream and I was like, hey, guys, I have to I have to leave. I have to leave because I was in so much pain. And it was because I was getting pain in my abdominals, right? And so it was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. And so I finally, after trying to get insurance in the first place, because I don't, I didn't have insurance. They were like, uh, I was in processing for, for like four months of processing. So I applied for like a mer uh, like emergency Medicare or med, med whatever, med med medical? Whatever. So I had emergency medical, right? And so because I had to go get an ultrasound because they were like, I think there's something in there. I get in there and do a fucking um, ultrasound. And when I'm on the table, I'm crying, absolutely crying because it hurts that bad, the ultrasound. Cause it's not like the one that, it's not like the pregnancy ultrasound that goes over your belly. It's the inside one that they put like a stick in there, you know, up my hooey. <laughs> my hoo-ha um so they go in the hoo-ha and they're like uh can you hold on a little longer and i was like crying and i'm like yeah i guess sure um and a, a second nurse comes in to to double check the first nurse because they said they wanted to double check it i knew something was wrong when the first nurse her eyes got really large and then she goes i need a second opinion and i went excuse me <laughs> Um, and then another nurse comes in and they go, uh, okay. So, and then the one nurse comes up to me and goes, hey, Gobby, listen, 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 sweetheart, sweetheart. Yeah. You could wait five days to get the uh, results of this ultrasound, but you seem to be in a lot of pain. And she like, her eyes are large and she's like, but if I were in this much pain, I'm not saying you should, but I'm saying if I was in this much pain, I would go to the ER and get the results today. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that sounds like a good idea. I am in a lot of pain as I'm crying on the fucking table. And so I rush out and I go to the ER. So I rush to the ER, which is thankfully I was in the hospital for the ultrasound, so it's fine. Uh, I'm in the ER, I'm waiting. I am, I have a mask on because thank God, because there were people around me that did have the vid of the co. Um, so I had to be extra careful. And they they do say, uh, see that there is um, a large fibroid and a large um, cyst, right? I'm in there and they tell me, okay, it looks like you have a, so it, the technical term was pedunculated fibroid. So at this point, I didn't know what what any of this was. I had to look up a lot of these terms. I thought like maybe I had endo, maybe I had some other things, but they were like, let's let's keep doing some tests. So a pedunculated fibroid and TW, I'm going to get graphic here, is a um, basically think of a, the, the technical term is a fibroid. It's kind of a tumor, but like it's hanging off of a stalk, okay? So basically it's hanging inside your body. And when it twists, blood flow stops and it, it, it causes a lot of pain in the body because the blood doesn't know where to go. And it kind of like gets like painful and it can send your body into shock and shit like that. It's bad, it's bad, it's, it's bad. Um, but then I also had at the same size, a, um, ovarian cysts, which I've had ovarian cysts before. They hurt like fuck, by the way. They're not great, okay? It's it's that, to go into even more detail about that, is when like, when mommy's in debt, no. <laughs> when, um, basically when your ovary produces eggs and they're not fertilized, sometimes they stick to the side of the wall. But if they stay sticked to the side of the wall, they can become cysts and basically fluid filled sacks. I know not, not a fun way to say that, but that's what it is. And they can get bigger. Okay. It's bad. It's bad shit. But mine was this was double the size of my ovary. So, uh, so not good, not good. Um, so I went to my gyno 
back to my gyno. And they said, you really don't have an option here. Um, it's, it's a hysterectomy. You're, that, that's really what it is. Like a golf ball? Yeah. So it's like larger than a golf ball. And uh, the other one was uh, larger than that, I think they said. A hysterectomy, for those of you who don't know, once again, <laughs> is the removal of the uterus. The thing that, the, the, you know, the thing that gets bigger when you hold babies. Um, the fallopian tubes, which is the tubes that connect to the ovaries and the ovaries which produce eggs. So they said, you just need it. I can't have babies anymore. Yeah, I'm sterile and feral actually. <laughs> But we'll get to that. So the whole kit and caboodle, really, um, because of how badly these had taken over my 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 downstairs parts. So um, twinsies. <laughs> um, I have no kids. I, I am I'm ki my closest kid is Cerberus. Cerberus is my child. Um, but that's okay. I I I really wasn't in the mood for kids, really. <laughs> um, but. But no Prigorante, exactly. So I was in pain and then the pain got worse and that's why I stopped streaming. I can always adopt, yeah, that's that's always a thing. But right now I'm just sterile and feral. The pain starts getting worse and worse and I'm not able to sit up. I'm not able to sit or uh, do anything. So the pain got worse. I stopped streaming because I was in so much fucking pain. It was real pain in the ass. Um, and I told you guys, that's why around when I stopped streaming. Um, I was stuck in bed. I was stuck in bed. There was nothing I can do. And they couldn't figure out why I couldn't walk um, and how why I was having so much trouble. Like I had a lot of gastric distress, I'm gonna call it. You streamed with the pain before then? Yeah, yeah, actually the pain started around November and the, I stopped streaming a few weeks after that. So I think I streamed for a month before I stopped. Um, because it wasn't like hugely bad. Gabi Ruby says, congrats on the uterus of the uterus of the uterus. <laughs> um, so I have been in a lot of pain. There's not a lot of things they can do. They've given me Tylenol. I can't have ibuprofen because of my high blood pressure, but they really didn't like let me, I couldn't see anybody sooner because I didn't have insurance and I had to wait for the insurance to clear. So I had to get emergency insurance for this operation. So I finally get scheduled and I was supposed to have my surgery January, like the first week of January. And I posted about this. I was like, I'm gonna get a surgery and I have to take a bunch of laxatives and shit because it, there cannot be anything in your stomach or anything while they do that because I was gonna get like a cut open kind of a one. There's, there's two different ones, TW, uh, there's two, different, well, there's multiple different kinds of surgery for hysterectomy. One is like a C-section. Um, and the other is, uh, the other one is the one that I did get done and I'll tell you more about that. So I had to have Tylenol and they basically were like, yeah, that's all you can have. And I was in a lot of pain. It was really bad. And TW about drugs and um, uh, THC and cannabis, just TW. I, the only thing that would help was edibles. And um, thankfully I got cleared after I talked to my doctors about it, that I could have that. So that is what, that is what I was able to have during that time. And that is the end of the edible talk. I, I that is, I, I'm just gonna say that that's the only reason why I was able to survive is because I was able to take that because I wasn't able to have anything else um, until the surgery, which I did get gabapentin and I think oxy, but like until that point, that was the only thing that let me get through. Um, so just FYI, that is that just assume that I'm, I am zootin because that is literally all I could have because of my fucking um, high blood pressure. Um, nothing, nothing was, a I was able to touch it unless that, you know, so there, that is my that talk. Cause I know some of you have, have that kind of TW. So I, ju I just want to let you know, just assume that I'm also doing this on the side. Um, so it's the day before my fucking surgery and I'm called into the doctor's office and he's like, I just want to check you for pre-op. I said, yeah, no problem. Come in. I'm taking all my stuff. And he gets up in there and he goes, 
Actually, I want to have a second opinion. He goes, I want to send an opinion on second thought. And I go, my surgery is tomorrow. And he goes, yeah, no, I, I really, I really want a second opinion. And I said, you could have given me the, given me a second opinion two weeks ago when, when I saw you. What, what, what? I'm in a lot of pain and I've been in a pain for uh, almost two months now. Why can I not have my surgery right fucking now? And, um, now this is, this is going to be very, very upsetting for some of you. He said, and I quote, what about your future husband? If you were my daughter or my future wife, what, what, wh why would, what, uh, this would, uh, so the day before my fucking surgery, he tells me, if you were my daughter, I'd want you to have all the options. Or if you were my future wife. I am in fucking pain. I can't have anything except for other drugs. And this is what I have to do. I was very upset. I was very upset. And at this point, I was going to take both ovaries. That was my my choice because I was like, hey, if one's fucked up, maybe the other one is. Um, and, but you know what? Fuck him. I think, I think in the end, I got a better doctor out of it. I got a better doctor out of it. So I had to call other doctors to get this fucking surgery, okay? So the nearest doctor that would do it, because I told you I moved kind of far away from civilization. I did. I Well, first, I, I cried. To be fair, first I cried very, very hard uh, because I was in so much pain and that this man had just told me to just fucking deal with it. I went back home and you guys know I live with Mr. Manager and his husband. And Mr. Manager and his husband were just fucking pissed. Absolutely pissed at what when I came home. Um, and they actually, <laughs> they actually advocated to me, uh, with me. They, they let me go back with them and they helped me fight it. Um, but basically we found a different doctor that was two hours away from where my apartment is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm mad. I'm mad. I was, I, yeah. I'm, so Mr. Manager, uh, like, <laughs> I told the doctor Mr. Manager was my brother. <laughs> I love when doctors care more about hypothetical person more than the real actual person suffering right in front of them. So happy you had support to navigate it. Yeah, it was very, honestly, I, I, I told a lot of my friends how pissed I was. I was legitimately sobbing, legitimately sobbing. So I was just like, Mr. Manager's my brother. <laughs> and he calls and just tears him a fucking new one. Just tears him up. You, he's like, you better make this right or my sister, I'm gonna ma male practice your ass. Like, you, find another doctor that's willing to do this for her. <laughs> because I love my actual goblin brother, but he's not a confrontational man. <laughs> so I got my actual bl brother's blessing. <laughs> um, To pretend to be my brother. <laughs> So, thankfully, I was able to see a doctor that week. Um, a different doctor, two hours away, because I'm kind of in East Bumblefuck, but whatever. Um, and so we go there, and this doctor, I have to say, was a thousand times better. I hate, I hate to be like, I hate to be like that person that's like, ah, yes, because it was a male doctor. But this other doctor who has the genitalia that I have, just saying, was like, you need, you need, you need a surgery right now. You, you need surgery right now. Like right now, like right fucking now. By this point, right, it's almost three months and I have been in a wheelchair for two. I have been in a fucking wheelchair. Uh, going to appointments and things. And so I wa I go into this thing and thank God I had Mr. Manager and his wife, be uh, husband, fucking, <laughs> he just, he's gay. Uh, Mr. Manager and his husband because fucking they drove me to all my appointments because my family's too far. 
my family's too far. So thank God his male wife is <laughs> but, but no, because I hate that person too with the actual experience every single time the doctor has a, right, exactly, exactly. So I get in there and they tell me, and they fucking tell me, hey, I know why you can't walk. I know why you have so much pain. Uh, also, many, by the way, many, fucking my love, my, my fucking darling many is walking me through this, thankfully. I had fucking, I had Moon, I had Mama Moon, I had Miss Lala, I had many, I had Gary, I, like my goofballs. The only reason why I was able to fucking do any of this is because I had my on-call Dr. Many on my ass making sure, and she was pit, oh my god. If you want to hear Manny get mad at that doctor, when I, <laughs> you should have heard it. But the doctor was like, hey, I fucking know why you can't walk. This fucking fibroid, this thing, the pedunculated fibroid is leaning on your rectum and your, and your sciatica and the nerves there. So the reason why you're having trouble going to the bathroom, the reason why you can't walk, the reason why everything's going wrong and you're in so much fucking pain is because this fucking TW tumor fucking is laying on your fucking nerves. So yeah, that's why you're on fucking, and that's not what the first doctor didn't give me any of that. The first doctor didn't tell me shit. This first doctor didn't say anything. And it turns out the second doctor says that the first doctor would have possibly put me in a bad place because he didn't consider my high blood pressure. He didn't consider that my high blood pressure was a risk. So I might've actually gotten everything removed and then had to get another surgery afterward. And it would've, and might've had a fucking heart attack because of this fucking first doctor. Yeah, so it was actually a good idea. Yeah, good idea, bad reasoning. Exactly, good idea, bad reasoning. Absolutely. Seems pretty male practicey, right? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Coro. Yeah, exactly. It was fucking awful. But this doctor says, do not worry. I'm gonna, do you got, do you mind if I do a laparoscopic hysterectomy instead of the slice and dice? And I was like, what's that? And she was like, it's a cool robot. And you know my ass, all right? You, you know, you know who I is. You know how I like mechs. I, I was like, you gonna put, you gonna operate with a Gundam? Fuck yeah. <laughs> I thought that was so cool. I was like, wait, what? I was like <laughs> she gets to pilot a robot into my body to take this shit out. So I thought that was cool. It, it, it actually, it's like, so my first one, oh, I love mechs. Mechs are my fucking favorite thing. Big O for my right there. <laughs> exactly. So instead of one big cut in my, oh, TW, TW, uh, slice and dicing, hold on. Instead of one large like C-section like cut, which a C-section is like a like a pen sized cut uh, in in into me, uh, there's five little tiny cuts. So when I say tiny, I'm gonna put these band aids just to let you know what it looked like. It was hold on, this is why I had the band aids. The band aids were for this. It's five tiny little incisions, and so I'm gonna make this as small as I can get it. Yeah, yeah, that's actually pretty good. So they're like tiny incisions. And so I have one here, like right above my belly button. Some people, they get it where it's actually in their belly button, but because of the size of my uterus, because my uterus was the size of an 11 week pregnancy, um, they had to take it out a little bit different. So here, um, so there's one, uh, there's one here, like one here and one here. And then the other one's a little lower, like closer to, to like uh, my hip. And then the other one is like here, like that. Just so you guys know. Yeah, I figure I would tell you. I'll be really fucking honest. So I have, hopefully they said after a year, the scarring will go away. But if not, I'm just gonna get some tattoos over them. Just gonna get some tattoos over them. So it's not a big deal. So of course, uh, the day before the surgery, they tell me that, so I don't know if anybody's ever had surgeries before, but they tell you the day before what time the surgery is. And since the surgery is two fucking hours away, I had to know in advance. I was like, all right, what the fuck? I also couldn't eat. I also could not eat. So they were like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be at like three o'clock, which means I'm gonna sleep over, right? So that night it starts snowing hard. And so I'm like, I gotta get there. I, I don't wanna miss my surgery. 
So Mr. Man and his fucking husband <laughs> wake up at the cr like super late and start driving two hours from to to get me there and get a hotel so that way they can be with me at the hospital. Um, as it as it fucking snows, and then we're there at the fucking hospital, and we get there finally. Um, and they say sorry. Um, I know you. I know it's been twelve hours since you've eaten, but the surgery's been delayed. <laughs> And I said, okay, I'm sitting in bed, butt ass naked, waiting for this shit. And I was like, how long? And they were like a few hours. I said, okay. So instead of at three, when I was supposed to be prepped, I was prepped at eight o'clock to, I was the last surgery of the fucking day. So I had not eaten since midnight the night before. And I was fucking starving. I was like, I was, I was feral. I was absolutely feral. And I didn't even know that I could have eaten ice chips. Like I didn't know, no, they didn't offer me ice chips. I was just fucking ferally thirsty and hungry. And like, I'm just gonna have a little sippy, just a little sippy of water, just a little sippy, just a little, a little sippy. I was, I was, I was feral. I was, I was not having a good time. I was, I was like, just a little sippy, please. Please let me have a little sippy of fucking water. I'll die, I'll fucking die. So yeah, that happens. Don't worry about my multiple hands. It happens sometimes. <laughs> what are ice chips? It's just literally thin, thin ice that you can just chew on and that helps you feel like you are eating something. So it's helpful basically. And, and many, thank God I had many because many had told me to have like, um like I had been drinking like Gatorade and I had been drinking like pre surgery drinks that no one had told me to do except many. And I checked with the doctors to make sure I could have it, but I had those. So thank God I had those or else I wouldn't have the energy because also for those of you who have also had general anesthesia, usually you get really fucking sick afterward because your body rejects it kind of a thing. Not rejects it, that's the wrong word, but your body doesn't like it. Your body doesn't fucking like it. <laughs> so they they start pumping me with the bye-bye juice, the go, back, go, go see stupid juice. And I see it, and in the corner of my eye, I see the Da Vinci, the Da Vinci, which is what they call the laparoscopic fucking um, uh, machine, the robot, the cool fucking robot, my mech, the mech that is about to perform the surgery. And I see it, I'm laying down and I see it, and I'm, they're wheeling me past, just like, is that the Da Vinci? <laughs> And they had it covered because most people don't like to see the huge robot that's about to do a, like a fucking Skynet shit to their body, right? So I like look over and I'm like, is that it? Is that him? Is that the boy? And they look at me like, uh, uh, yeah, you want to, you want to, you want to see him? <laughs> and I was like, do I? <laughs> and so they bring him over. They take out, like they take off the covering and they start telling me about it. This is such a mood. Is that, is that the thing? You're gonna stab me with that thing? Is that the thing that's gonna stab me? <laughs> and I, I, I think they were so delighted at the fact that I didn't like cower about it that I was just like, can I see it? Can I see the knives? <laughs> was, they were like so fucking like, like delighted at this point my i loved the team that they had on me they like it was really nice each of the per people in the team came in to introduce themselves to me like hey i'm monitoring this or hey i'm the one that's controlling this i'm the one who's doing this which was so fucking nice um but i got to see him i have the whole video of my surgery i made right like i want oh gosh should have asked for that shit gotta be fallen in love with the robot about to perform surgery on her this is the most stuff of fanfic <laughs> oh <laughs> is that you mr da vinci <laughs> um what are you what are you doing what are you doing later i mean like after my surgery i mean like when i wake up <laughs> oh oh well you have my permission i'll be sleeping but you have my permission <laughs> oh you gonna get inside me <laughs> he saved my life he saved my life! <laughs> Mind if I cut in? Mm, zaddy. <laughs> oh, Da Vinci. <laughs> it's so cursed. <laughs>
It was so cool. I posted pictures on my Twitter about what the Da Vinci looks like. It's it's huge. <laughs> Honestly, Mr. Manager, man, Mr. Manager was a real ally uh, for me. A real big ally. Uh, he he helped me out when my family was too far to help. So I, I very much appreciate him. Um, but yeah, I had my surgery. I, I conked out after saying how cool the Da Vinci was. <laughs> I woke up at like 11 p.m. Um, and the doctor, oh, so I wake up on the bed and the nurse looks disheveled above me. Like, like they just ran or something like that. And I'm like, is everything okay? And like, cause I woke up and she was just like, yeah, are you okay? I was like, I, I would really like some food. I'm starving. And she's like, you don't want to throw up? I was like, no, I want to eat. <laughs> Which is so like me. What would you throw up at that point? Exactly. I woke up and I needed food and the nurse above me was having, was was really like, um, was really shocked because most people don't want food afterward, but I hadn't eaten all day. And then I was like, is everything all right? And she was like, well, you woke up earlier, which I do not remember. You said, I'm in pain, so we gave you more medic medicine. But then you started ripping off your clothes and we had to stop you or else you would have hurt yourself because you were hooked up to the IVs. So while I was over, the, like while I was under, I started stripping like a maniac. <laughs> and so the reason why the nurse looked so fucking disheveled is because she had to hold me down and be like, Kabi, no, Kabi, no. You can't be naked. You can't. You can't be naked here. You can't do this. <laughs> you gotta stop this. I need the Da Vinci cardinally. <laughs> Gabby's ready to have that Da Vinci back inside. <laughs> so I woke up, I ripped my clothes off and basically, um, uh, hungry. So they would, the, at that point, the cafeteria was closed, but the nurse went to the staff cafeteria and got me um, chicky fingies, uh, some soup and some stuff. So the good thing is I can start eating like immediately afterward, which is great. Like I was very happy. I can eat whatever the fuck I want because that's not what's like fucked up at that point. It's everything south of that did you mean like rapid stripping or did you mean like r outright ripped your clothes off uh well it was one of those like hospital gowns that like have the ties at the top so like i ripped the ties off kind of a situation like i like i i was they had to re redress me kind of situation <laughs> um but i'm okay i was okay it hurt i i at that point i still had like tw I still had like the catheter in and stuff. So like I, I had to stay the night. Um, <clears throat> I, I uh, then the next morning I was able to order as much food as I wanted, which was kind of sick. Uh, the food actually fucked really hard uh, for hospital food. Like I was shocked. Like they, they the, for, I had breakfast and lunch and the hospital food was like, hey, you can have like two meals and like th three sides and a dessert like it was really fucking good finally snack goblins i, I was so happy i it wasn't mid it actually was good i think for lunch i had like meatloaf it was like really good like i was i was shocked actually like it was yeah uh, they fucked they fucked i guess after like mu like months of being like what do i do what do i do and having to like stay in the bed it was really nice it was really nice to get that food. I went back, I had to make sure that fucking um, Cerberus didn't jump on me. Um, but the problem, so the reason why my recovery is a little bit different is because I wasn't able to walk for three months prior to the hospital. So sitting up and walking was even harder because I had to relearn how to walk because some of my legs had atrophied a little bit at that point. Well, I could, last time I was in the hospital, I could stomach was the jello. Well, thankfully I was able to eat whatever the fuck I wanted. So I had coffee. I had like a whole bunch of stuff that I was able to have like immediately, which I thought was really good. Um, yeah, like I hadn't walked. So like walking like actually made me like, huh, huh, huh. so like just literally breathe heavy walking. It was really hard. It was really fucking hard. Um, 
And so, I, and then I had to get tests done, make sure everything good. They had lime jello, I think. I think it was lime jello that I had. And I also got rice pudding. Coffee. <laughs> Basically, if you don't use a part of your body, it just stops working well. Yeah, it basically, if you don't use your body for a lot, it, it starts like breaking down. And I had to, like after surgery, one of the most important things you have to do is walk because you don't want to get a blood clot. So I was like, I had to walk. So it was one of those things where it's like, no, no, you gotta. She gives Serby extra hugs to make up for not jumping on you. I did, she was not allowed to be in the bed with me during like for the first month um, but now she's allowed to be in the bed with me because all of my external. So uh, once again, I'm gonna talk about stitches. So I have five cuts that are, well, they're, they're scars now, but uh, five, five on the outside. And then I have stitches obviously on the inside because they took everything but my left, I'm gonna say left, yeah, it's left, ovary. Everything but my left ovary. Um, is in there. Um, and when they do that, another FYI, for those of you who ever want to do this, um, because I'm relatively young, that was another thing. They didn't want me to take, want to take my kitten caboodle or my ability to produce because um, I'm pretty young. I'm pretty young. I, I haven't had menopause, obviously. And if I had like, so when you get that shit removed, you go, your body goes in through a thing called like, um, it's like a mini menopause, like a little menopause. Um, wait, you still have one ovary? I do, I have one ovary left. Um, because basically it, it produces enough hormones for my body to, to not go into surgical menopause, which can cause a whole bunch of bad problems for my heart and bones and shit. So just FYI. So I got a mini pause. What does that mean? It means that I had like night sweats. I would wake up and my whole body would be like a slimy mess. And I'd be like, oh God, oh God, I'm a fish person. I'm a fish person. <laughs> it's like, it was so hot. I, I swear to God that I had sprouted gills. I was like a fish person. Isn't that just how New Yorkers are? <laughs> Don't tell Hubbity. <laughs> I'm not gonna joke. I I did I I did say that when I was with the goofballs. I was with <laughs> I was with the goofballs and I was like I'm like a fish person now. Honey would love me. <laughs> I was, I was, I was a slimy mess. I was just, this was, it was bad. It was fucking bad. Um, and then I, I would cry over everything cause like my emotions are heightened because all of my hormones are going crazy as well. So then I, I would watch videos on like TikTok and shit. And I saw this capybara like swimming, you know, like little puddling, like and I started fucking bawling, not crying, not like, like not going, oh, that's so cute bawling because I couldn't see its legs. And I was like, where, where's his legs while I swim it? Where, where's his legs while I swim it? It's just so cute. I, don't <laughs> I didn't realize that my hormones would be so out of fucking whack. I, they warned me about this, but my hormones were so out of whack that I saw a capybara and I was just like, it's so beautiful. <laughs> so yeah, that was a lot of it. It was like me uh, surviving. Um, but I'm, I wasn't, I still can't bend that great. Um, I wasn't allowed to bend at all because of the internal stitches. That's, that's the big thing that I couldn't walk or do anything about because you have to take it slow and you can't bend or uh, lift anything during this time because the internal stitches can tear. Um, so that's time, right? So good news is thanks to all of the pre-op stuff that I did with many, all of my stuff is healing very fast, very good. But as you all know, I have a shit immune system. So I have to be extra careful, extra everything. So eight weeks was actually like their protected minimum time. And then 12 is like the best time ever. Like that's when I'm, I should feel normal. So I'm at eight weeks right now. So I was like, I went to the doctor and I was like, do you think I could stream? Do you think I could just, you know, sit and talk? I don't even have to play video games. I could just sit and talk to my chat because I really want to play. I want to become a monster, obviously. <laughs> I, I really 
want to talk to my chat so badly. And so they said, yes, they said I could sit in my chair, but they said I had to practice first to see if I could sit up. And so um, so that's what I'm doing. I, 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 I actually played some Baldur's Gate in my um, chair. I, I started fixing my computer stuff. There's still stuff I have to fix again. I, I swear I'm always fixing my fucking stream. Um, but yeah. But, but I but I had to do a lot before I got cleared. And then they were like, you could do a few hours, just be aware of your body. And if any discomfort happens, you gotta fucking end it. And I was like, okay, I promise. I promise, I promise, I promise. So, um, so yeah, here I am. I'm okay. It's been rough. Um, I, I was in a lot of pain at first, but, but like I said, uh, I was, I've been able to, to deal with those things. Um, was another thing that kept happening that was like weird I, I swear i'm missing stuff but i'm sure I'll, I'll let you guys know as as it as it happens yeah that that was basically everything that happened i think i think i got it all maybe uh basically everything yeah <laughs> um but i'm back i'm i'm recovering i'm okay so oh right i'm not gonna be able to to stream full full time like i'm not going to be able to do like the four days a week as i usually do for three to four days a week because of i'm still recovering um and it's not 12 years about 12 years 12 months yet or oh, weeks god damn it <laughs> yet um so um marvelous jack yeah <laughs> but i will be able to stream when i can so all of my streams are going to be sneak attack streams until um until 12 weeks and then I'm probably gonna take a rest week before streaming full time again. So just FYI, I'm probably gonna I'm gonna stream as uh, uh, not as frequently as I'd like, obviously. Uh, but I promise you that we, in the 12 weeks, if I still if I feel good enough, then I will uh, rip the bandaid off and go that way. I'm fine with sneak attack screams from you, beautiful. Oh, <laughs> it would be like a gorilla stream. I know I want to call them sneak attack streams though. <laughs> So yeah, that was everything that happened. I'm still healing. I still have scars. Um, they're small, um, but but I'm still healing. I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm at a percent where the doctor said I could I could I could sit in the chair and hang out with my buddies. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so yeah, you're gonna see me more than none, but it is gonna be less than normal until I am full, until I'm at full strength, until I'm at um, until I'm all, all of my power. <laughs> but yeah yeah i just wanted to see you guys again more than anything i wanted to see my friends and i wanted to talk to you guys and let you guys know what the fuck was going on because like i think that was the biggest thing is i couldn't fucking walk i couldn't fucking sit up i had to be in bed and that was really draining on my mental health like it 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 <laughs> mr manager <laughs> Mr. Manager offered to like put like a robot arm over my bed so that way I could still stream and shit. <laughs> I was like, no, I just I I need to rest. I don't think I have the energy to do it. Um, so so now I do. Until you're full, Gabi ate serving. No, 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 I would never. Um, but but yeah, we're glad to see you again. I'm so glad you're a good group of friends to support you. Yeah, it was honestly I I have to thank the goofballs just. The goofballs have been my rock. Like fucking, the just asking me how I was okay, at just making sure I was good. Making like everyone was so kind and so lovely. I also had I had Mama Moon, who had experience uh, a very similar experience, but years ago from them, and there was chat that was messaging me. Uh, a lot of you, I tried to keep you updated in my Discord of about like what was happening in, in, and I tried to keep you guys updated as much as possible. And then I had Miss Lala who has had like uh, 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 experience with Endo. So I had to, I had to really uh, talk to, talk to people that had these, these issues with their uterus and be like, Hey, what the fuck is happening to me? And if, if I didn't have these people talking to me and letting me know that it was going to be okay, I don't know how to gone i just don't i was able to visit everybody in their streams but i didn't want anybody to be like oh how are you gobby in other people's streams so i just didn't speak <laughs> because i i felt embarrassed i was like i don't want to i don't <laughs> i don't want to talk about it i just want to lurk in my friend's streams so i just lurked in all my friend's streams for months i was stealthing <laughs> but it was
was really it was really nice to see everybody like able to hang out and play video games you know that was the that was the thing i couldn't do you bitch what i didn't i didn't want it like i i didn't want to be that person you know like when you go into other people's streams and everybody talks to that person i was like i don't want people like asking me how i am and then i have to explain it in chat i was like i don't want to explain it in your chat i want to have a stream to tell them what happened in mine so i was like no i'm just gonna i'm a lurk i'm a lurk <laughs> I love my friends so much that I would rather just chill. And that that actually worked out because I just didn't have, I didn't have the cookies to interact as much as I'd love to. Cause you know, I'm an interact person. Like I like to interact. So it was, it was hard. It's really fucking hard. I'm so fucking happy I'm back. I'm so fucking happy I'm back. Ah! Sorry, sorry, I just had to, I had to just vent. <laughs> the thing I had to tell myself very often was, Hey, Gabi, you just lost, a, you had a major surgery and you lost an organ that's connected to other organs. So you need to fucking chill, Gabi. Um, that, that was the hardest part. That was the part that, that really, I had to kind of stick to myself where I was like, it's okay you're not streaming. It's okay that you're not doing the things you love because you're gonna do it later when you're when you're feeling it. And can I say, oh, okay, like, can I say how much better I feel already? Another thing I had in my body was a thing called Nexplanon. For for those of you who don't know what Nexplanon is, it is an implant uh, similar to the IUD um, or just birth control. And I had that because my body hated my, my uh, period and I'm gonna be fucking real here. My body hated that shit. Um, every time I had my period, it was for two weeks it was like a fucking, it was a river of awfulness. And my body basically, uh, I got sick every time. I got so sick that my doctor was like, oh, um, it, it seems like this is killing you. So I had to get it and I couldn't have traditional birth control because of my heart medication. So I was kind of like, well, what do I do? And so they were like, well, if you do the IUD, it's probably gonna cause more worse cramps than you've had, which my body already had a bunch of cramps. <laughs> they, they were very bad um or the implant and so i got the implant in my arm and um so i got that removed in a separate surgery after the hysterectomy and can i tell you and i'm gonna get a little emotional about it because i've been thinking about it and it's been a lot um it's it, it, it it's it's something i i i didn't realize um but I couldn't feel the emotions as strongly as I had prior to the implant. Um, I, I was feeling joy and I was feeling love and I was feeling, you know, like all those other things, but I didn't feel it fully. Like it felt like a fog over it. And when I got this shit removed and oh, and, I'm, I, and I've told you guys, I had so much anxiety. I like so much anxiety. Um, that it kind of took over my life. Um, but I'm, when I stopped, when it stopped, when they took it out of me, it was like this cloud had moved over my head and I, it didn't feel like a robot. I still had motions and stuff, but it was definitely different. And I guess it felt like I was mind controlled for, for years in, in a way. It's hard to explain. It's really hard to explain. Um, but I feel like I have so much energy now. Like I already had a lot of energy. You guys know how much energy I am. I, literally my tag is like high energy goblin. Like that is, <laughs> I, it's not, it's not like I never had it, but it, it feels like I have all the energy that I lost back, which is so nice. <laughs> Maybe the energy that when I started streaming, I had because I, I, I guess my body was fighting itself more than any anything in the world. And I didn't even know, like I didn't know that all of these things were happening in my body until after everything was removed. So yeah, so when I say that I really feel really good, I mean it, I fucking mean it. Like I mean how good this, this work. Cloud fog metaphor works best. I can relate to that at least a perpetual brain fog. Yeah, yeah, because I had so many medications going on, you know? So I'm feeling great. I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling happier than I ever have. And I feel like my body is actually my own again. 
I, 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 it's been hard feeling like I, ha I don't have control over my emotions or control over my body or control over my anxiety. Because I would just be anxious when, if anybody messaged me, I would have a, like, like a panic attack. Like, and I used to never be like that. I used to be able to reach out to people. I used to be able to be the first person to message people. Like hell, like a lot of the goofballs, I messaged them like more often. And and then it like slowly became this anxiety of like, oh no, I can't, I can't. I, I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to be bothered. And like, I'm starting to slowly feel like my body become mine again. And it, it, it's really, it's a it's a different feeling. I don't I don't it it's hard it's hard to explain because it feels like I'm I've woken up from being mind controlled. And that's there's always a part of you that is like, wow, I didn't realize I was being mind controlled and that kind of sucks and that's something I'm going to have to unpack with <laughs> that's something I'm going to have to pack myself. But letting you guys know that I do feel like I have my body back and that like I can do the things that I've always wanted to do again because I used to be a rock climber I used to do mud runs I used to do all this stuff and I I haven't had the energy to do it I was I had I had energy playing games and streaming but I just didn't have the energy for all the other stuff anymore and so now like I'm so excited to do all these things again <laughs> That's how I felt every time I wanted to say, hey, I'm really happy. You feel much, much better. No, it's absolutely fine. I thank you guys for saying hi. Thank you guys for reaching out. Thank you guys for being like so kind to me and so understanding and being here. I mean, I was gone for fucking months, my guy. Fucking months and you're here and, and you're still supporting and everything and and it's it's really wonderful it's it's really nice so thank you guys so much i i just don't have the words for it it's it's a surreal feeling to be back with my community and be with my little snacks and mall rats and yeah i'm gonna say both because fuck it who cares <laughs> yeah i miss you guys so much <laughs> like really 